What's up guys, Houndish here, and today we're jumping in with some Destiny 2 news, and in this one we get a trailer for Festival of the Lost 2020, as well of course as new details for the event this year, so we get all the glam of those lovely Bungie trailers, but then look at some of the content itself, the rewards, activity stuff, extra Bungie rewards, and generally get a sense of how the event is going to work this year, and of course this one's kicking off next week, on Tuesday October 6th, so gonna be one of the things to keep us busy over the next couple of weeks while we wait for Beyond Light. So without further delay, let's jump in and break down the new info. The very first thing we should do, as always, is check out the trailer in full, so here it is. Hello again. Lots has happened since we last met, hmm? Make the most of this time while you have it. is uncertain, but we always have today. Pretty awesome trailer right there, of course with the kind of heavy metal theme going on, but we can see immediately that the tower is decorated in the typical Festival of the Lost style, but Eva makes reference to the rest of the seasonal goings on at the moment, of course the arrival of the pyramid ships and all of that stuff, but then we see the Guardians decked out in new armor for the festival this year. Then of course, the heavy metal section of the trailer in the Infinite Forest, so the Haunted Forest, which is what I should have called it, is of course returning for the event this year. We get plenty of previews of the masks and things like that, and otherwise as you'd expect, plenty of glam shots of the Guardians dressed in all the festival stuff for this year. But of course, Bungie do go ahead and give us additional details for the event, so as always, festival is to celebrate those that we've lost. And as always, we'll have secrets in the Haunted Forest. Bungie say that this time the spider wants to bargain with us for our cooperation. Meet with him, line your pockets with cipher decoders, and then race the clock within the dark corridors of the haunted forest. And of course, wrapped rewards is going to be one of the main features, so a new exotic spyro ship and ghost are all wrapped up and ready for your collection. But there are new triumphs, masks to wear, and more chances to get a perfect roll with perk possibilities on the Braytech Werewolf and Horror Story Auto Rifles. We will go into the details about these particular rewards a little bit more in a moment, but we get a nice look at the Titan in the new Chemflesh armor set with the spider mask on. And before we talk about the armor, but you say that if you find yourself constructing a throne made of candy, there's a chance you've earned the triumph that grants you a new Festival of the Lost emblem. So that's a pretty cool emblem right there, probably unlocked by completing the triumphs for the event. But here they give us a nice glam shot of the new armor. So these are the universal armor ornaments available at Eververse, and they give us plenty of nice glamorous shots of those armor pieces in the game. I believe purchased in packages, so look out for that on Tuesday's reset. They give us a couple of technical details for some of the content. So for the Haunted Forest, the minimum recommended power is 750. And once again, we will be able to launch into the match made and firewalled versions of that where you can play it solo. And we'll have 15 minutes to clear branches, defeat terrors, and collect both candy and chocolate strange coins and then we can return them to Eva for the various rewards in the event. But the Cypher Decoder and Haunted Forest Caches is one of the new kind of mechanics, so alongside a completion reward chest at the end of the Haunted Forest, players will also find five optional caches available to unlock, and these can only be opened using Cypher Decoders, which can be acquired via random world drops and activity completions outside of the Haunted Forest. And this is where we'll be able to pick up different roles on the Horror Story and Braytech Werewolf. We'll take a better look at all of the rewards you can get in there in just a moment. And of course, weekly bounties will return, offering XP, Bright Dust, Glimmer, and Chocolate Strange Coins, all of which can be spent towards picking up masks and items in Eva's inventory. And once again, those will include things like the exotic sparrow we can see right here, which is pretty cool. But we also have the ghost shell, and of course, they provide images of the tower decked out for the event too. So as always, give us all of your thoughts on that stuff. Now, looking a little bit deeper into the quests, triumphs, and rewards for the event. As always, we do have the new set of triumphs, so according to the Master Triumph, there will be seven of them this year. 
One of them to open 15 caches in the Haunted Forest using Cypher Decoders, and there are other divisions of that as well. So the first one requires 15, but then 30 and 45. And then to acquire all of the Festival of the Lost 2020 masks, and then three separate triumphs associated with the three earnable exotics for this season. So not quest drops, but purchases that will make at various thresholds from Eva Levante during the event. So of course, we need to acquire the Ghost from Eva, and that'll be the Restless Shell, but there are also triumphs to get the Rap Speed and Tomb Rider. So there are a selection of earnable exotics, as well as the stuff that of course will be in the Eververse store. And then you get the quest stuff, so there is the kind of traditional introduction quest. Speak to Eva Levante, who sends us off to visit the spider in the Tangled Shore, and then while wearing a mask inside of a strike, gambit, or crucible match, upon completion, you'll find a cipher decoder, which is almost certainly going to be one of the ways to acquire more of them in the actual event, and then it'll teach you to use the cipher decoder on a cache in the Haunted Forest. And we'll talk more about what that cache can hold in just a moment, but the other intriguing quest, of course, is pretty much a one-step quest, quite possibly going to be a little bit like the Ascendant Toothbrush that we got from Eris last year, but it simply tells us to speak to the spider on the Tangled Shore and he'll give us the item Ascendant Lens, a focusing lens from the Dreaming City through which the Ascendant Plane can sometimes be seen. And so there is speculation as to whether the item will actually do anything, or whether it's kind of just an inventory thing that you can dismantle or hold on to. I certainly hope that there are some secrets that it can show us. And of course, in terms of new masks for this year's event, there is the Wrapped Traveller and Fractured Traveller mask. There are actually more than five of them that are listed in the Triumphs, because we've also got the Bubbling mask, Spider's Associate mask, as well as the Spider mask itself. And then we have Anna Bray, and also characters associated with Beyond Light, so the Exo Stranger and Varix as well. And as we've seen, the Cypher Decoder, or the Encrypted Cache, is kind of going to be one of the loot systems inside of the Haunted Forest, with that main material drop-in, in the form of a decoder, which is essentially kind of a token to be able to open the cache. But it will contain all of the festival shaders, from previous years at least, as well as all the previous year's masks, and then we've got the Braytech Werewolf and Horror Story Auto Rifles, which have been updated, not to sunset until Season 15, so they've been made completely relevant. And there's also an additional Legendary Engram that you can pick up at random when you use that decoder as well. So a bit of a different way of doing things this year, and I'd be curious to get a sense from you guys, are there any bits of bobs from this event that you want to grab? I think definitely I'll go after some of the exotics. And despite the fact that the armor is of course an Eververse store purchase, it is pretty cool looking stuff. So I imagine a few folks are going to want those, especially as universal ornaments to apply to gear in the future. But otherwise we'll have to see if there are any secrets or surprises that we haven't seen just yet once Festival drops next week. Of course beyond that, we are anticipating some of this season's secrets in the kind of finale stage, I suppose, as we get very close to the launch of Beyond Light. And so that's stuff I will as always keep you posted on here on the channel, so if you are new around here be sure to get subscribed and turn on notifications if you want to be kept up to date with everything related to the game. But if you have enjoyed the video, a like rating down below really helps us out, and once again let us know if you're going to be jumping into festival next week down in the comments section. But otherwise, for today guys thank you for tuning in, and whatever you get up to, I hope you have an awesome day.